Welcome to double spring mass system. So the general idea here is we are going to hang one spring mass system from the bottom of another. So we are going to hang or are going to consider a spring mass system with another spring mass system hanging from it. So in terms of what we're looking at, We'll have our first spring mass system hanging. Uh, we'll say this top one has spring constant K1. And the mass has mass M1 kilograms. And then we have another spring hanging from that mass. And we have a second mass on the bottom. So that bottom mass will have mass M2 kilograms. There's a little squished in there. And this one will have spring constant K2. Then if we let the system just rest with no motion whatsoever, we'll call that equilibrium for the entire system. So these are joint equilibrium. They occur together when the spring is, when the whole system is at rest. We'll set Y1 to be the upwards displacement uh, for mass one, the upwards displacement from equilibrium for mass one. And Y2 will be the upwards displacement from this joint equilibrium for mass two. Um, beyond this, we're going to set, uh, we'll have, Delta script L1 will be the joint equilibrium stretch of string one. So this is our equilibrium stretch. For spring one. And then we have uh, delta script L2 will be our equilibrium stretch. For spring two. Um, and then we will also have damping. So we'll let C1 be the damping coefficient. For spring one. Uh, C2 will be the damping coefficient for spring two.
uh, where the um, damping force is directly proportional. So the damping force on a spring Spring has an R in it. <laughs> the damping force on a spring is directly proportional to the rate of change of in length of the spring. Um, and this damping force will be due to uh, internal friction on the spring. Right? Due to friction on the spring. Um, and it acts opposite of the motion. So oh, we this is sort of the information we need about the spring mass system. Oh, we also will have F1 and F2 external forces. So F1 will be an external force on uh, mass one, and F2 will be an external force. on mass two. So what we have is uh, mass one has a variety of forces acting on it. Uh, it has the force from spring one. So the force due to spring one uh, should just be the spring constant times the stretch from natural length. So K1 times the stretch from natural length, which will be delta capital L1. And delta capital L1 is just delta script L1 minus y1. This is precisely what we had for just the single spring mass system. Um, so essentially, because y1 is upwards instead of downwards, that's why we have to subtract it instead of adding. So this is our force from spring one. Then we have our force from spring two. Um, so we will have K2 times delta L2 um, this one we actually are going to want to have a negative in front of the K2 because this force is pulling in the opposite direction since this spring is below our max. Um, so we, and then delta L2, we will have our chain equilibrium stretch, which is delta script L2. Uh, for spring two, Y1 going up actually stretches spring two. Uh, Y2 going down will stretch spring two. 
So we will want to have delta script L2, we will add Y1, and then we will subtract Y2. Again, this is because we're working on the spring that is beneath uh, mass one. Then we will have um, the force due to gravity. which will just be um, negative M1 times G. Uh, we will have force due to damping on spring one. So the force due to damping is opposite uh, motion. So we'll have a negative. Then we have C1 times uh, the rate of change in the length of uh, spring one will just be Y1 prime. Uh, then we have the force due to damping on spring two. Uh, this will be equal to uh, C2 times, if we wanna look at the rate of change in the length, um, the length was essentially, uh, or at least the change in length from natural length was delta L2 plus Y1 minus Y2. Uh, so if we're looking at change in length, we would be looking at y1 prime minus y2 prime. Sorry, it should be um, so we could do y2 prime minus y1 prime would be sort of uh, how we add length. And then um, sorry, let me check something. Right. Yes, so we should have C2 times Y2 prime minus Y1 prime down below. Um, And so this is the force due to damping on spring two acting below our uh, object or our mass. Uh, and then, so we have our force due to damping, we have our force due to gravity, we have our force from our springs, and then we have our external force. Which is just F1 of T. And I need to update my screen. So if we put all of this together, we have our total force on mass one. Is uh, our total force is always mass times acceleration. So we would have M1 times Y1 double prime should be equal to, we have a whole set of things to add up here. Uh, we have our two uh, spring equation or spring forces. So we have K1 times delta L1 minus Y1. Then our second spring we had negative K2 times delta L2 plus Y1 minus Y2. So putting this in, we have 
minus k2 times delta script L2 uh, plus y1 minus y2. We have our force due to gravity. So we have minus m1 times g. We had our two uh, forces due to damping. So we had minus c1 times uh, y1 prime and then plus c2 times y2 prime minus y1 prime and then plus f1. If we look at the forces acting on mass two, Uh, we have the only force due to spring two only. Uh, which will be uh, equal to uh, K2 times delta L2 and delta L2 is uh, delta script L2 uh, plus Y1 minus Y2. Then we have our uh, force due to gravity. Which will be negative M2 times G. We have our force due to damping. which will be equal to negative C2 times uh, Y2 prime minus Y1 prime. Damping again is opposite the motion. So Y2 prime, uh, We should have a negative in front of because it's uh, positive. Again, one of our changes in equilibrium uh, or displacements from equilibrium is shrinking the spring, one is adding to the spring. Um, so we have our force due to damping, negative C2 times Y2 prime minus Y1 prime. And then we have our external force. which is F2 of T. So we have our total force on spring two. We are looking at uh, M2 times Y2 double prime, right? The total force, mass times acceleration is equal to, we have our force due to the spring, uh, K2 times delta script L2 plus Y1 minus Y2. Then we have uh, force due to gravity minus M2 times G. Then we had minus C2 times y2 prime minus y1 prime and plus f2 of t. So at this point, um, the only thing that remains 
for each of these equations is to swap out our k2 times our delta script L and our k1 times delta script L uh, by using the equilibrium force balances. So note, at equilibrium, right, uh, spring one uh, must hold up, sorry, spring one must hold up mass one and two. And so what we get is that the force due to the spring, uh, K1 times that equilibrium stretch, delta script L1, update my screen again. So K1 times delta script L1, our equilibrium stretch should match our uh, total mass M1 plus M2 times G, right? This is that spring force which is directly counteracted by our force due to gravity. Uh, at equilibrium, it's holding up both of those weights together. Um, and uh, we also have um, spring two just has to hold up mass two. And so we have K2 times delta L, script L2, is just equal to M2 times G to counteract gravity. So putting all of this together, um, so replacing these, in our two equations, we wind up getting so we had m1 times y1 double prime was equal to uh, k1 times delta script l1 so m1 plus m2 times g uh, minus k1 times y1 then we had minus k2 times delta script l2 so that will become minus m2 times g and then we will have minus k2 y1 plus k2 y2 so we will have minus m2 times g minus k2 times y1 plus k2 times y2. Then we have minus m1 times g, that was our force due to gravity. Then we had minus c1 times y1 prime, and then we had plus c2 times y2 prime minus y1 prime. And then of course, plus f1 of t. Notice here that all of our gravity just cancels out. We have an m1 times g minus m1 times g and an m2 times g minus an m2 times g. So these just cancel each other out. And we are left with m1 y1 double prime is equal to, I'm gonna rearrange this and put our um, uh, first order derivatives out front. So we will have a minus uh, c1 plus c2 all in parentheses times y1 prime. And we have a plus c2 times y2 prime. Then in front of our K or in front of Y1, we are, have a subtract, and then we in parentheses we'll do K1 plus K2. All of that multiplying Y1. 
Then we have plus K2 times Y2 plus F1 of T. Uh, for, I'm gonna just shift this over slightly since I went all the way to the edge. So this is one of our equations. And then for our other equation, we have m2 y double prime, sorry, m2 y2 double prime should be equal to the equation we are starting off with. We had, uh, I need to update my screen. So we had previously gotten that m2 y2 double prime was equal to k2 times delta l script l2 plus y1 minus y2 minus m2g minus c2 times y2 prime minus y1 prime plus f2 of t. So in this case, um, that k2 times delta l2, we had just figured out that this should just be equal to m2 uh, times g. And so we can go ahead and replace it. So we should have m2 times g, that's our k2 times delta L2. Then we ha should have uh, plus K2 times Y1 minus K2 times Y2. Then we should have our uh, gravity, we subtract minus, or we do minus m2 times g. Then for our damping, we had minus c2 times y2 prime minus y1 prime, and then plus f2 of t. So again, anything containing that m2 times g, we just can go ahead and cancel out since we have m2g minus m2g. And rearranging this, we get that our M2 times Y2 double prime is equal to, uh, we have a positive C2 times Y1 prime. Then we have minus C2 times Y2 prime. And we have plus K2 times Y1 minus K2 times y2 plus f2 of t. So putting these two rectangles I've just boxed together, these two finalized equations, we have a system of two second order equations uh, in terms of the, uh, yes, a system of two second order equations for our double spring mass system.